So I was thinking. Uh oh. I was looking back at my family album, and I was seeing like my grandfather, you know, my great grandparents, and you know how sharp they were, and how they looked. And then I was thinking about us now. I was in Vegas, and there was an epidemic of bonnets and fuzzy flip flops <laughs> going around. I was look today. I was walking up the street. And it was, I saw like five different sets of women with pajamas on in the daytime. So, you know what sucker shit is? What I call the indoor outdoor carpet motherfuckers, right? <laughs> Nobody ever really put outdoor carpet in the house. You knew that shit was for outside, and you know what the carpet is for inside. Somewhere along the way, we done got confused. Okay, we done switched the carpets up. So to my flip flop fuzzies. And Bonnet Brigade, you <coughs> want some sucker shit. There it is. All right, well, cool. So, <clears throat> welcome to uh, another episode of Skinny Black's Lounge, uh, where uh, we, we provide the space for authentic uh, black male lens on life, uh, where the barbershop the barbershop meets the library meets personal development and so we got a special 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 guest here today uh, we got our man dr taj eldridge yes sir give it up give it up get some claps yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 93 in the house. there it is fall 93 what's up what's up what's up so hey you know we we got some questions <clears throat> but before we dive straight into all the questions Taz, what, what do you what do you want the people to know about you? Yeah, well, number one, um, you know, happy to be here. Uh, what's interesting is that my line name was Skinny Pimp, so I, I, am, <laughs> I am definitely in the space. Uh, I am no longer Skinny Pimp. I'm full size Pimp, um, but you know, it, it's still all all good. But you know, I I, I joke and joke with that because um, I think one of the things that's missing is authenticity. And authenticity in our people and even though i have a doctor degree i'm in finance i'm still the same way here that i am in the in the, in the, in the house you know and i think that um a lot of us we lose that and not realizing that our culture is what's driving clubhouse venmo cash out twitter all that stuff and so we need to we need to monetize that you know and that's 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 it. But I'm, I'm a venture capitalist. We can talk about that and get into that. Absolutely. Uh, we have a $250 million fund to invest in black and brown only uh, fund managers. And then prior to that, I was in clean tech with the Los Angeles Clean Tech Incubator located in downtown in, in a space that we all need to take advantage of. And, and we can get into that later as well. Uh, grew up in Texas, so Southern boy like, like my boy Rob. And uh, of course, member of our noble clan of, of Cap Alpha Psi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cool, cool, cool. So again, we had to had, had let Ty start off with the introductions. I'm Skinny Black. Uh, Rob to my left. JT. Period of silent. Hi, mom. And actually, off camera, we have Lebo. Hello. <laughs> a ghost. He, he's still a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so let's hop into it. So uh, I, I like what you said, man, about. Um, us driving the culture yeah um but let's 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 back up a little bit man tell us about some of the business i mean you're an entrepreneur yeah tell us about some of the stuff that, that you started yeah yeah well you know i i, I want to preface this and say that a lot of times out here in our community i always hear like yo i want to own my own stuff i don't want to work for nobody i think that's bullshit because at the end of the day you always work for somebody either your customer your wife whatever <laughs> god you know whoever you're looking at the, the key to it though is that being control of, of what you own and ownership. Mm. And even when you're working with somebody, I, I never like to use the phrase working for somebody. I like working with. You can own your intellectual property, what you create. So so for me, I, I started out in banking. I was at Wells Fargo for a decade and then went to UBS Investment Bank, um, did did an MBA at Pepperdine and then the PhD program at Claremont before going to um, a private equity fund. And that's when I first started learning about like venture capital. And I and actually, the way I learned about all this stuff was through one of our frat brothers, Reginald F. Lewis, who wrote a book, Why Should Why Guys Have All the Fun? Yeah. And that Good was like book. the first time I heard about venture capital, right? And so so from that standpoint, you know, the first couple of investments that I made failed miserably, lost a lot of money. My wife was super pissed. 
And um, but then I ended up having one that kind of took off that was in the political space. Um, they got acquired, which means another company purchased them. And then an, another company I worked with, same thing happened with them. They were acquired by a company from 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 the Netherlands. But Rob, to your point, the companies I've been in, I've been involved in and invested in have been from the clothing side. I was an equity partner and CEO of a company called Boswell that most people may remember as dressing Andrew Wiggins when he got drafted, LeBron James, the late Kobe Bryant. Um, I used to say we dressed everybody except for my man Russell Westbrook. Um, <laughs> And um, I, I was part of a company that, that dealt in the wine space that was really kind of making, you know, culture to wine. If, if you remember, at one point, everybody was on uh, craft beer. Craft beer was like mm -hmm. making it and wine was so scarily tanking. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Ciroc and, and the spirits always been in the culture. And wine never really got that. And so we, we created a company that was focusing on bridging that culture with wine. And, and now you see like, and, and even though E40 has been doing it, E40 has a nasty, nasty meaning good uh, wine out that's really, really making it. Now you're seeing a lot of people like John Legend, Nas get into the wine space. Um, and then in, in 20, I think 2015, um, I led the accelerator in Riverside, UC Riverside, where I brought Rob at, I was actually one of my first speakers. And uh, what was interesting is that we made Riverside the number four place in the nation for black and brown entrepreneurs because we really understood how to disseminate information similar to what you guys do here um, and, and access, right? Access is key. Um, and in 2018, I went to the Clean Tech Incubator, uh, which is uh, in Los, Los Angeles. But from an investment standpoint, I'm an investor in companies such as Bevy, which is like the Zoom for conferences. I'm, an, I'm a new investor in a company called Black Power. They just raised $63 million, black owned company. I'm an investor in a company called Kidget, which does uh, KIGT does um, uh, charging stations. So if you have an electric vehicle, he's the first and only black-owned charging station that's out there. So that's important. Mm -hmm. It's important to know because as we're making a transition from gas vehicles to electric vehicles, when you go get gas, who typically owns those, those facilities? They don't look like us, mm -hmm. right? So this is an opportunity for us to own in that transition, right? And so that's what I'm all about. That's why I'm talking about ownership and, and how to figure it out. Dope, dope. I mean, thank you for telling me about Gidget, man, because we're definitely, uh, our next vehicle will definitely be uh, EV. Yeah. So, uh, they got some hot ones out there, man. I mean, man, Tesla's dope. not the only, 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 only thing on the market, bro. We got to look at Canoe, which is LA based. Mm -hmm. You look at Rivian, which looks like a, a, a nasty looking uh, uh, Land Rover. Um, there's a lot of good ones coming out there. What's that? Uh, is it Lumens or? Uh, yeah, um, it's, it's like a high end. When I yeah. was watching on TV, yeah, they're, they're competing yeah, it, with like the Maybox and all those. Yeah, it's a it's a lot that's coming out. I mean, even Hummer came out with electric vehicle. You know, so it's it's, it's getting there. Yeah, well, yeah, GM is a uh, in the next year or two, they're gonna have an entire line. Yeah, of electric vehicles for every everything they have right now. Volt, Volkswagen is turning to Volkswagen. I did it. I did it uh, uh, jokingly, but they're making a whole similar to GM a whole line. Mm -hmm coming out. BMW has already done it. I mean, a lot of OEMs, you know, are doing it. I think, I think, you know, from a standpoint of what makes a good investment, as you look and see the, the, the market goes to that, the political side going to it as well, right? Because, you know, the governor has already said by 2035, all new vehicles in California have to be electric. Mm -hmm. Same thing has happened in New Jersey and Connecticut is about to join in as well. So, yeah, man, you, you talked a lot about Oh, and, and and thank you. Good looking out. Good looking out on the 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 wine hookups when when our boy Prentice oh, yeah. did uncork. Man. Oh yeah, you, you came through with some with some oh, yeah. connects that, on that. And and that that was the reason I did it. Being being in the wine space, knowing that culture drives. That's why I was so happy to see 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 brother Penny do that film. Yeah, because a lot of people don't know that we we are deep in wine. You know, there there's black owned wineries like the Brown family estates is out there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and mm -hmm. like we're you know, the ladies are drinking the Moscato like it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, rose ain't no lips. <laughs> like it's sugar water. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so cool man. So so how did you get started, man? So it's a lot of cats out there saying yeah. saying <clears throat> well let's let's break out two specific things. Yeah. People start businesses and call themselves entrepreneurs yeah. and not really know what business means. So yeah. I, I, I've said I've made that mistake myself. I started a, a business of consulting and coaching, yeah. but <clears throat> really, can I walk away from it and it still make money? Yeah. Right. Nah, I'm, I'm still in it right now. So there's a so 
we, we need to get clear about what we mean about business and entrepreneurship and so so how'd you get started yeah well well, well first l- let me let me add this other piece of uh vocabulary entrepreneurship mm. entrepreneurship do, does do you guys realize how hot cheetos was created <laughs> no. no so this cat <laughs> that works as a janitor for frito-lay mexican cat here in rancho Cucamonga. you know if you ever had elote Right, the lote is, is is the is the Mexican um, spice uh, corn, the which corn. I love. Right, uh-huh. he I was at work. The mayonnaise on mine. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> prima. Right, let's let's go and make it Afro Latino style. <laughs> but but he was at the shop, and and one of the machines didn't didn't flavor the Cheeto. So he's like, "Yo, can I take these bags home?" And they were like, "Oh, you know, go ahead." And um, he took the bags home. He put the same flavoring that he did that he typically do with 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 uh, with, with the lote created flaming hot cheetos he brought it back and he was like yo like this good and the guys were like the the executives were like yo like why don't you present it he had no idea about pop. he was a janitor so what he did was again free game that we always miss he went to the library mm. and looked up how to make a business presentation he ended up making a business presentation became an entrepreneur because he he created this product line ended up making a good amount of money still working at, at frito-lay and now he's like some exec. Well, he's retired now, but at the time he became some executive for Pepsi Cola because Pepsi owned Frito Lay, right? And so the whole point of the story is that whether or not we're, we're entrepreneurs, kind of going on ourselves and making a lot of risk, or entrepreneurs, the whole idea is about intellectual ownership, right? Same thing with 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 um, the handheld, the Game Boy. Mm-hmm. Same situation, with Game Boy. The guy who designed Game Boy was a janitor. Mm. So shout out to the janitors out there, man. Because <laughs> yo, the whole idea is that talent is universal, but opportunity is not, and that's what we got to do. But but back to me, like like you know, I I, I grew up in, in, in I'll be honest, I grew up in an area where you do two things: you either hoop or you rap. And, and well, I, there's I, a third thing you probably well, didn't. Yeah, well, I I, I was going to kind of keep it PG, but let's go and go there because <laughs> I have some cousins do it. They was they were slanging right, which was entrepreneurship. They understood it. And a lot of my a lot of my relatives were were bloods in Texas because you know I know we're here in California, but there's something back in the day they're talking about banging in Little Rock and bro the 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 games in the South yes. went hard you yes. know they they just had a lot to prove so um, you know all of them didn't really want to be getting in trouble but but what I peeped was how they managed their business selling dope I mean mm-hmm. I, I peeped and it's interesting. We joke about the corner boys selling selling dope. I I, I I equate that to the VCs that are out there. They're slanging these safe notes. They're <laughs> slanging these 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 documents, right, to get people to sign it. Mm-hmm. But I think for me, I was a poetry major in in, in undergrad because I wanted to rap, and I figured, well, you know, if I'm gonna rap, I need to understand poetry. And my dad was like, I don't give a shit. You're gonna go to school, you know. So um, I, I didn't I didn't really get into to entrepreneurship until um, like after seeing it as a banker. Right and, and really kind of looking at it, mm-hmm. and I think for me, my first business was um, a guy that was doing this um, back when when blue blackberries was around, like mm-hmm. this online uh, therapy mm-hmm. situation called I Listen, prior to even the iPhone, and and it's so interesting. We were we were too much ahead, but we didn't really have the the format, right? And so I, I wish now would have stayed held on to it now that everything's I, you know, but. But I think for me, it was it was a learning process. It was a learning process of looking at people. It was a learning process of failing. I think we don't allow ourselves to fail as people of color when mm-hmm. we're in businesses because failure. I don't look at L's as losses. I look at L's as learnings. Learning. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of times we're like, you know, like I can't fail. Like like we we're so used to like always having to succeed, not realizing there is a lesson in that journey. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, so I, I think that's been my, my pathway. Well, you know, I always talk about uh, with clients, we, we talk about progress over perfection. Mm-hmm. So just stay moving, stay in motion. Absolutely. Yeah. Jay. Man, I was, I was wrapped up in the stories, man. <laughs> I, you know, it, w- one of the things that, that I'm hearing, um, whether you tell the story of the two janitors, whether you tell your own personal story, um, what I'm one of the things that I'm taking from this is being open. Yeah. Right. Where where the ideas are coming from, it uh, it doesn't matter what title somebody has or, yeah. the, or or the letters behind their name. It yeah. can come from anywhere. Yeah. So in your space, 
of of trying to foster black and brown business. Mm-hmm. Where are the places that you're getting these people from? How, yeah. how can they be found? Yeah, I, I think I think brother, you said a real interesting thing, and I told Rob the theme song for me as I walk in here and listen to was the art of storytelling <laughs> by Outcast. Shout out to Outcast. And, and I think that what I what I look for is just having conversations with people because that phrase that talent is universal but opportunity is not. I really believe that. I really believe that that talent just doesn't exist in Silicon Valley for so long. They made it seem as if the only way you can have a startup is you have to go to the Bay Area, you have to be white, you have to be male, you have to drop out of school. I, I don't think that's the case. I think that I think that ideas come from people from their dreams from the anger, from the aspiration. So I think for me, it's all about just meeting as many people as possible, having as many conversations as possible, because you may find that person who don't even believe in themselves, but you can provide more. So as a venture capitalist, and maybe Rob, I don't know if we should write, break this down, but like what I do as a VC is I manage other people's money to invest in, in, in startup businesses. Mm-hmm. And the idea for us is that we wanna get what's called 10X. We wanna get at least 10 times our money back. So where every dollar I want 10. And, and so with that, you got to play the game of numbers. You got to spread that money out for many different opportunities because 90% of your portfolio is going to fail. You already kind of know that, mm-hmm. but you know that 1%, 1% of that is going to make up for all of that. Like I'll give you a perfect example. We have a frat brother, Rashawn Williams. He pledged the Morehouse, pledged, uh, he invested in Coinbase back in the day via Nas. I ain't even tell you how much money that brother made, man, but I'm just, I'm just saying oh, like, one thing I love that he said is for all those folks in, in crypto, he didn't bet on the currency. He bet on the casino. Mm. And I felt him on that because because Coinbase is the casino. Right. But bro, back to your question, I think that for us to find talent is you have to just always be looking and to always do things like this. That's what for me. That's why I'm always like on podcasts. I'm always kind of putting my stuff out there. I jokingly call myself the DJ Khaled of clean tech because it's like <laughs> for me, I'm a producer. The, the entrepreneurs, you're, you're like an artist, right? You're like Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar is making content, but people are consuming. You're making content either, or services or product that people are consuming. Mm-hmm. But how do you make that? He makes it through, he gets financed through, you know, venture capitalists, which are like, like labels. Like we're like venture labels, right? We, we, we invest in the, in the artists to create. And then how do you hear about the artists? through Spotify and, and SoundCloud, but that's accelerators and incubators and, work, and co-working spaces, right? So those are the amplifiers mm. of entrepreneurship, and that's yeah. how you find good folks. Mm. So y'all like the connects. Yeah, yeah, I, that's why I say, <laughs> that's why I keep saying, like, like this history of the dope game, we, we can't deny it. If you, if you got it in your blood, you need to come and get it out, because that's exactly what it is. You know, I, I'd say people all the time is that I, I provide the four C's as an investor, capital, customers, connection, and culture. All four of those things are what you need to succeed when you're having a business. I was thinking. Uh Uh-oh. So, recently we had the the problem with the pipeline that got uh, cyber attacked. And it basically shut down the gas infrastructure, panicked, blah, blah, blah. So I started doing research. And the number one crime on the rise in the world, cybercrime. In the United States last year, it was over $4 billion. Okay. And I was thinking about how niggas are still robbing liquor stores with ski masks on. (laughs) (laughs) Your cousin, Lenny. Okay, is over there robbing vines right now with wool on his forehead. And meanwhile, they shutting down entire pipelines with a computer. So you digital divide niggas, you want some sucker shit. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I want to point something out that it may go past people. Um, you, you hear us talk, you hear us build, and you hear this brother, okay? And you can tell he's got neighborhood in him. But let's not forget that he also has a PhD. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. So it's great to have conversation, but my grandfather 
used to say, documentation beats conversation. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, I'm still that. You got to have them all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What, yeah. what we're talking about and trying to present to you are men that are well rounded and well versed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, can, we look like you, we talk like you, but we also have the credentials. Yeah. But let, let me add, though. Let me add, though, because what I don't want to get twisted is you. Don't let this suit and the PhD fool you, <laughs> right? Because here, here, I'm going to give you an example of this brother who dropped out of school to eighth grade, was a crip, went to prison for stealing cars, went to prison for like six years, I think. And he now, he get out of prison, was in his work release program. But just because he was a crip and he stole cars didn't mean that he had an intellect. So he ended up getting six patents himself, has a company called Very Cool Packaging. They just raised $16 million, like one of the one of the leading people in, in sustainable packaging. My whole point is that sometimes the documentation is not just the letters. The documentation can be the pathway to like that IP or anything else. And, and the thing about it is, is that the these opportunities allow us, right? Like I, I'll give you a perfect example. I love using musical analogies. I mean, I used to be a rapper, so we're going to have that. But mm -hmm. Back in the day, I look at this like back in the day when, when Boys the Man got put on, right? They went to go song to, to, to Michael Bivens and mm -hmm. yeah, I like it, right? And, he, and he's it. Today, and T.I. said this, mm -hmm. T.I.'s like, if a nigga come, come rap to me, I'm like, man, get on. Show me your SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. Show me your YouTube. Show me all these things that you can build right now in addition to your music. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with founders. No longer am I going to come to you and you're going to give me a notepad and be like, yeah, I got this idea. Fuck that. Like, you're going to come and show me your clubhouse conversations, your medium posts, all these other free things that are out there that have built up your opportunity to say, all right, I got the idea. I just need the capital for the execution. See, it's thought a lot. That's all you got to do, Rob. That's what you're trying to, I'm trying to teach you how to host, man. <laughs> one, of the, one, of the, one of the interesting things uh, that came to mind when you're, you're saying, because I was thinking about different forms of equity. Yeah. And one of the forms of equity that we skip over, which I think is the most important to me, mm -hmm. is sweat equity. Oh yeah, mm. putting in the work, yeah. and that's what you just described. Yeah, that's why I, that's part of what I mean. I was going with where the documentation beats the conversation because I know plenty of people that say, and then when it's time to put up, they out. Right. Everybody want to get on the finish line. Right. Yeah. Okay. But it's a whole race to be run. Mm. Okay. So my, how many folks do you run into? Yeah. With great conversation. Yeah. And it's mostly smoke. Well, you know, I, but to your, I want to go back to your point, and I think it's very important because I, I meet a lot of people who say, man, I want to be an investor, I don't have the dough. Mm -hmm. And I think there are two pathways for that. You have things like Republic, uh, which is called equity crowdfunding, where you can go as 20, loot as $25 to invest. And you can start there to kind of test your chops to see if you can spot a really great founder and great idea. Um, but but I think even some of our first investments were all sweat equity investments. It was like, yo, like I like your business. Even like the clothing company Boswell that was a part of. I came to him and I said, you're doing custom clothing for athletes. I think there's a better way. And let me help you do that. Not only I'm going to tell you that, I'm going to help you implement it. Mm. And, and and I think that's the type of sweat equity that I look at and I look I look to. Not just let me give you an idea and let me let me step back. Let me give you an idea and let me actually help you execute it. Because as investors, again, like 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 most founders now, they're like, I don't want just money. I don't want just you to open up a wallet. I want you to open up your connections and your experience and your wherewithal for it, right? So I think that at, at this time, it's like this, this is, and that's the experience of, of failing. Because if you failed at something, you know what to tell the person to avoid, right? It's just like marriage, right? Yeah. And, and Rob and I talked about this. When my wife and I first got married, I think this is what, 22 years? I can't remember. 99 when I got married. <laughs> but the first thing we did was we went to marriage counseling, not because we needed it, because what we said was we want to make sure we ain't talking about the shit they talking about. Like everything they <laughs> arguing about, we want to make sure we nip that in the bud right now. And, and we did that our first, Ooh, man, first five years of marriage. Yeah, because we were just like, <laughs> yo, like we ain't trying to have these issues that people have. Like we got too much, too much money to make, you know? And so I look at that as the same way from a founder standpoint, know what, the greatest people to have are the people who have failed, mm -hmm. but are willing to get back up again. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I, and I think for me, that that part of the documentation mm. is 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 going through the motions, figuring it out. And 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 the reason I want to put that out there is because I think that there's a lot of smart people who have failed, who 
who um, you think you see now in business, you're like, oh, they're, they're great. You know, they're, they're, they're wonderful, but we're not looking at the failures that they've made. And I think for ourselves, even as people of color, we need to, to recognize that, you know, and, and realize what we can do. Man, you didn't know black dudes didn't get married. <laughs> That's what I keep hearing all the time. We don't get married. We're not in a relationship. Hey, I'm, I'm the only one on the panel that's not married. <laughs> but Look, you were. That's true. Okay. What? what that's well. You know. That's what, my whole you? point about knowing <laughs> the failure. Because exactly. the next time you go down there, you're gonna be like, I know what not to oh, do. No, I, I know a hell of an Easter speech on that. <laughs> <laughs> and you got 22 years, 24 years. So you know, we we trying to do some things. Hey man, you, you know one thing that we had the conversation after the Mac Mittens episode that, that <laughs> this man cracked up halfway through all the the phone calls and the text messages, and and one thing that you that you said to me that stuck with me is like, hey man, we need a Mac Mittens for your finances for your investments, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. So uh, how would you be that for us? What what's your yeah. vision for that? Yeah, mo most definitely. Here's my thought on it. When, when I, like I mentioned, when I first got into the space, I didn't hear anything about it. But there were already people who looked like us in it. My question is, why didn't it spread the, the knowledge? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like the thing about it is, is that you know, um, the way I look at it is like the reason I do this, the reason I do everything, and I talk to people. Anytime somebody talks to me, I'm always talking about it. Hell, I put out an album talking about you know investing, is because we have the talent. We may not have the vocabulary for mm. it. And this business in investing is about having the, the vocabulary as well. Because if I'm asking you for X, Y, Z, and you don't know what I'm talking about, but you have it, you you may not make it make it happen, right? You might not get an investment. So the idea is about understanding the the, the lingo or, mm. or, 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 the, uh, or the ecosystem. When, when I was at the University of California, Riverside, that was our whole tenant. Our whole, our whole idea was to educate everyone, no matter who they look like, no matter what they look like, I don't give a shit if they were like on the street. Uh, we wanted them to understand and know, and we put out like like pamphlets and flyers and everything else, right? So I think that I think that for us, it's about access to the information. And, and I think for so long, you had some people who got in these positions, and they were like, "I'm the only one here," mm. you know. So I need to make sure I get I get get straight because I'm afraid I'm gonna get I'm gonna get 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 taken off. I think for me, and, and this happened recently, Rob knows this, and I'm very transparent about my health as well. When I, when I became very sick, my thing was like, well shit, like I don't give a shit no more. Like, like, like no one can do anything to me that has not already been done. So I'm not afraid about getting information. I'm not afraid about getting other people in. So my whole thing is like, I was talking to Chuck D once and we were like, you know, the idea for me is to open up the door so a hundred more people can come in and, and exceed me. Mm. I think that's the type of thing we need to have right now. It's like, it's not about me, it's about we, you know? So see, you the dude, we would have to call in, right? And we were like, listen, we need Taj in the room to like translate and tell us like, hey. Yeah, but see, yeah. but see, not only that, what Taj is gonna do is gonna be like, let me bring in four other people. Right. Who, who could do that as well. Right. To, to make it like, like we talk about this, it's like we, we talk about cancer. And cancer, what really cancer is, is the idea that it takes over another cell, right? And then it spreads. But we always talk about it from a negative standpoint. We never talk about that from a positive standpoint. So we need we need to have us this this cancerous bit of information that comes into the space and it grows. And so for me, like like a lot of times that I'll do, like 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 I'm always trying to make sure that somebody else gets highlighted because there are other people out there that can do this stuff. There are other people out here who, who get the knowledge. Mm -hmm. But I think what happens is media allows one magical negro at a time. <laughs> And we allow that because we we just like we don't see it. I'll give you a perfect example. There was a young lady named Arlen Hamilton who has a fund called Backstage. Backstage was killing it. And Arlen has a story. Again, story is such a good part of what we do. She was formerly homeless. She was in the music industry. She didn't go to college, high school graduate, barely graduated from Dallas. And she ended up launching a fund that was like, that's if you Google her now, Backstage Capital, is like one of the most popular black-owned funds, right? Um, she ended up saying that she wanted to raise $35 million for sisters. And the media was like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know? And then there was these other brothers coming up called Harlem Capital. Of course, in Harlem, doing real well. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the cats of Harlem. And, um, and then the media now, like, they're the darling, right? And so... And so what was happening was the media was dictating, not, and they've been doing it for a long time, who our leaders are, who, who are speaking mm -hmm. in, for us, so to speak. 
And so for me, it's like, let's change that. So every time somebody's talking about me, I'm going to mention all these other folks coming up. Mm-hmm. Because we can't allow them to control the narrative. And the fear is that, well, if I don't, you know, the media is not going to talk about me no more. My business is going to fail. No, man, we, we don't have to go that route. It seems to me we have too many gatekeepers and not enough gate openers. Oh, absolutely. That, that, that's the word. Absolutely. And, and, I, I, and I think if we think more like that, mm-hmm. if, somebody needs to put that on a shirt, though. So <laughs> if, if, T-shirt. If we, if, we think, if we think that, you know, I think that we'll be much better off. Much it, better off. Because I had a question. So because a, a lot of folks, folk who I know who wants to get into entrepreneurship, they want to yeah. start a business, uh, they want to do this, and they got, you know, man, I, we all... I, I'm always doing some text intros with you. Yeah. So the question is, where are the the rooms and the groups of other back bittens like you yeah. that we can tap into? Yeah. So so man, good question. So you know, and they're out there, and I think this is the other thing too is like they exist, but they exist in the vacuum, right? Mm-hmm. They exist for the people who are in the know, and I think that venture capital itself is about being in the know because. There are some deals that no matter how much money you got, you might not get that deal because you don't have any relationship. Mm-hmm. What, what, what I think of it is like, I'm a former banker, right? And so I'm like, a lot of people, and I think I kind of got this from you, brother, is we don't make a lot of deposits in relationships before we take withdrawals. You make deposits in relationship. That's the whole give thing, right? Give first. And, and, and I think to that point, the organizations to your point, Rob, are like valence.community. That's an organization that was started by a black man named Kobe Fuller, based in Los Angeles. Anoop actually runs it, Guy Primus. And um, the whole idea there is to is to get more black folks, number one, connected and talking that are in different industries, but also get more of us on corporate boards, which is another area we need to have. From, from specifically in venture capital, for those who are listening, there is something called Black VC that is for people who, who are already existing venture capitalists like myself or people who want to go down that pathway. And then there's another that I founded called Green Tech Noir that's in the clean tech space, which is where we all need to get into. When, when Biden mentions infrastructure, what people need to understand is he's also talking about clean tech, where we need to run it. Let's look at weed. We've been selling weed for years. <laughs> now that this shit is legal and I go to, to startups, I don't see people who look like us there. And we need to change that. Right. Right. And, and I'll be honest, we ain't going to change it. Keep talking about it. I'll never want to hear. It. We know the stats. What we need to do is get in those doors and we need to get those cats that are selling, that, that's moving big, big bales right now <laughs> and, and put some tag to it. You know, for sure. Oh, matter of fact, I'm glad you said the board thing. I just completed my uh, Abley training. Yeah. To, to be on uh, yeah. my board training with Abley. That's kind of yeah. African-American black leadership. Yeah. Institute. Yeah. 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 Their, Shout out to I forgot the, the young lady that runs it there. She's a Pepperdine grad. But yeah, Abley is, is, is a good one. Uh, there are several others out there. Board, I went through one called uh, Ballroom Bound uh, that, that prepares you for board leadership. So let's say we wanted to start a fund. You know, how do we do that? I mean, you just told the story of a young lady who, who wanted to start a fund. Yeah. You know, how do we do that? Yeah, well, the, well when we talk about fund, let's talk about it from two standpoints. There are, there's you as an angel investor, that's where you're investing your own money, or it could be your sweat equity, like we talked about, where that converts into equity of those companies, and you can look at that as what you call a track record. In our industry, track record is important. What track record is, is to show me, again, that TI, show me that you you say you want to be an investor, you can make great investments, show me that. You know, show it, show me state, right? And, and I think, you know, as an angel investor, that's one pathway. On the venture fund side, there's only two pathways. You can either join a venture fund and it can show your value. And, and the way I said it is that, and again, somebody asked me, like, do I have to have an MBA? I was a Frank, Frank Martin from USC, Noop, that reached out to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, what you and do have to show noob. is that you have value. You have value. Just like a woman, right? Like a woman coming <laughs> to you. Like, 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 like I tell brother all the time, the looks ain't value. That, that's the icing. The value is how she acts, how she treats you, what she's going to do for you, all the good stuff. And, and the same thing with, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the fund is what value you're going to provide to founders, right? Kind of founder come to you and they feel like comfortable enough to talk to you about their business mm-hmm. and comfortable enough to take your advice. Um, and then the third piece of that, which is a little bit harder, starting your own fund that Arlen did. With, with starting your own fund, um, there, there are several schools out there, like one called... Um, 
Venture University, and then another one called uh, by Brad Fell, Venture Deals. So it's actually a book. And shout out, anybody interested in the book, Venture Deals is a really great book. Um, I actually bought one for Frank for him to, to study. Nice. Um, but that's the pathway for you to, to learn how to be a, a VC yourself in your own fund. And then, of course, there are organizations like Coffin Foundation or Coffin Fellowship. It's about 80 grand that trains you how to be a VC. Um, we have a program that's for existing VCs. So if you're already in the space, but you want to get into get kind of kind of level up your game like a master's degree, uh, we have that as well. Cool. Let's go deeper because my man Jay, he wanted to uh, he, he had some thoughts about um, this whole thing around ownership. Yeah. And and as we were having our conversations just in preparation, you know, he had some he had some some really deep thoughts about that. He want to ask so, so yeah. get that Jay. Spill it. <laughs> well, I, well, before we go there, tell. We were talking earlier, mm-hmm. and you were talking about the importance of ownership. Yeah. First of all, why? Mm. Yeah. You know, for me, there's this thing called the racial wealth gap that's been existing for decades. The racial wealth gap means that for for a black for every dollar that a black person makes, the white folks is making, you know, a certain number above that, right? And then the same thing, the Latinos is behind the white folks, and so forth and so on. Is that? You know, and, and, and I think a lot of times I hear often about, yo, black dollars, let's, let's recycle. How do the black dollars stay in the black community? You know, I, I feel that. But for me, it's like I want my black dollars to get other black dollars and then come back to me. Meaning that when I was when I was in a, in a clothing company, we decided not to particularly sell to, to us. But we sold to the Asian community in China because I'm a charge them and they bring that money back to us. I, I think you can have both. You can have where you can support black businesses. That's true. But you can also where you can, what I call, repatriate the money back to your community. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one pathway. But I think for me, ownership is, 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 is a pathway to reducing that racial wealth gap. In the past, you know, and I put my economist hat on, housing used to be the path of the home ownership, either by buying your own house or in real estate property, which still is. But the, the credit crisis just decimated it. Tremendously, right? And so you have to have a diversified focus on that. And that can either be owning real estate, it could be owning businesses, that could be a mon- a mon- a many different things. Like I'll give you an example. My family, my wife's family, they are franchise owners of McDonald's in, in Northern California, owned by 18 McDonald's. And, and so shout out to, to folks that's in the franchising base. But the whole idea for me is owning a pathway to revenue can come into your family or com- community. You know, one of the one of the, the keys, I think, I, for me, and you know, we can we can disagree or expound. The key ownership number one is ownership of your own mind and your own thoughts. Oh, mm-hmm. most definitely. Mm. That's that's that, that's that's <laughs> that you have to have that before you do anything else. Because this conversation that we're having, you're having a conversation as a free man. Yeah. Mm. And most of us aren't free. Yeah. So, we're your your level that you're talking about. Starts with freeing up your mind. Man, what did Jay say? He he said, and, and and I got the keys. Until you're on your own, you can't be me. Until you're on your own, you can't be free. Absolutely, absolutely. The man said he was a poet, dog. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, real but, talk. But the, but but that goes back to what I very first talked about: authenticity. Mm. Authenticity says you bring your whole full self into whatever you do. When you can't, you're not free. You're stifled. And, and I'll give you a perfect example. My name is Taj. It's Arabic. It means crown. My father gave me that name. My father was Muslim. When I was growing up and I got into business, I felt like Taj was too ethnic, right? It wasn't corporate, right? So I, became, I went by Todd. And I'm thinking, like, I'm, I'm rising through the ranks because I changed my name. But what, I, what was happening was I wasn't free. And I was being owned. I was being passed through the ranks. Mm. I wasn't rising. I was being passed through as property because they owned my being because they owned my name. And, and, and what changed me is when I got, I, didn't, I was there until I got to California. And the first time I met a Hasidic Jew, I've never, I mean, I'm from Texas, grew up Muslims. So I've never seen a Hasidic Jew in my life, right? <laughs> and so he's there, he had the hat, the curls, like all the whole, the whole nine, right? In Beverly Hills, in UBS Investment Bank. And he's like, like, why aren't you yourself? Because he knew my background and I was like, Man, like this dude has asked me this. And he's like, 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 even like your beard, your hair, your name, like that is you. That's what's going to make people want to do business with you is you. 
not who this caricature of what you are. That's right. And so to your point, yeah, like like definitely being yourself is is the first and foremost pathway to that. Bro, I, I got chills when you said that. Like seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. I was thinking, uh oh. I was thinking about the people that no matter what, they're gonna find a problem for every solution. They're gonna pick a fight no matter what, okay? You ever had good morning? What's so good about it, right? <laughs> those people, those are the people that will complain about paying the taxes after winning a million dollars. So this is what I call the versus battle niggas, okay? <laughs> Everything is a damn struggle and a fight, right? It's peanut butter versus jelly. Okay, and Jelly got to get his homegirls together to talk shit about peanut butter. Peanut butter never was good, you know. These these verses, niggas. Everything is a fight. Okay, peanut butter and Jelly alone, they're okay. But when they work together, it's magic. The verses, niggas, is on some sucker shit. <laughs> So what role? I got I got like a couple more questions, yeah. and we can we can bust this up. Uh, so what role has music played in your life? Oh man! If anybody follows me on, on, <laughs> on Twitter, on, uh, on on LinkedIn, like I, I be throwing out lyrics. I kind of get in trouble for it sometimes because you know I, I like I'm a I'm a Pimp C fan. So you know it's UGK all the way. All the way. R.I.P. So I always say you know I always say I'm a <laughs> mixture of Chad Texas, Butler. He's Texas you know, dudes, man. Uh, absolutely. It, 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 it's, it's, <laughs> It's on with it, you know. I'm a mix of Chad Butler, you know, Etheridge Knight if he's a poetry, and Adam Smith on the economic side. But, but I think I think music music plays a really good pathway into this. When anybody would tell you when they book time with me, I ask them a question. I say, "What's your favorite artist?" Mm. Right? Because for me, it tells me a lot. And and I'll be honest, I've met people like I don't listen to music, and I'm like, we ain't gonna work together because. For me, creativity spurs innovation, and innovation spurs creativity. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in this whole thing about right brain, left brain. One, everybody has something that's going to fulfill them, that's going to give them joy, right? And and what I'm looking for when I ask you that question is, what gives you joy? I don't care if it's if it's Dixie Chicks or Earth, Wind, and Fire. I, I want to know outside of the work what gives you joy because that's what the passion going to drive you. To, to really look for. Who is the person that doesn't like music? Oh, it's some folks that no, but I'm is, saying, that, folks. I'm, I'm saying, like, it, not one specific genre, but everybody yeah. likes classical, you know, yeah. yeah. Beethoven, I, bro, man. I, I, like, I you know. two people. I know two people. That's why they don't work with me. I asked two people. I was like, yo, like, what's your favorite artist? I don't listen to music. And I'm like, like, none? I'm like, I was like, not even like ambient sounds, like, you know, <laughs> the ocean or something? And they're like, nah. I'm like, all right, well, shit. <laughs> We ain't gonna work together. Yeah, kick rocks. Yeah, did you your know? daddy get hit with a guitar when you was little? No, no. <laughs> Scar for life. Remember the honky tonk man? Oh, no. <laughs> May had a, a, a you know Tina Turner as a as an in law. So, you know? And that's funny because he said his, his, his theme music he gonna ride up to be art of storytelling. You know my artist is at uh, you know Outkast, yeah. ATLNs all day. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So so when you wrote that, I was like. My man's in them. Yeah, because there's nothing come out of Alabama. Uh, man. Oh, what with David Banner? Come on, No, man. it's Mississippi. Mississippi. That's Mississippi. That's Mississippi. That's Mississippi. Uh, Rich boy? Rich, Rich boy, boy. Rich, Rich boy, boy from Mobile, Put man. Put on it. Well, no, you know that's, and that's where you had to go. <laughs> it's still Alabama. Rich boy is. I rest Mississippi. my case. Rich, anyway. Hey, Rich boy made a classic. Don't <laughs> sleep know. on Rich boy. He know he was rocking Only thing came out of Alabama was syrup and the Freedom Riders. Well, shit, that's, we need that. <laughs> Yeah, you can, you, hey, we we can have a whole discussion about it, folks. <laughs> if you don't have syrup in your pancakes, we don't have an issue. And, and see, folks don't know about that alligator syrup, boy. That, see, I know, but I know, see, I know. See, see. I'm, I'm learning something every day. See, um, so we're we're in this spot, man, right now. And uh, actually, man, it's a brother that that manages this, this shared space right here. Yeah. Um, shout out uh, to Brandon, man. And um, so uh, we, you and I talked uh, a few weeks ago about a new shared space that's coming up. Yeah. You know, talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, shared, shared, shared space and shared office is I think gonna be important as the future goes on. Like, like I think co what COVID has done is a few different things. COVID has made us think creatively about how we create, how we innovate. And it made us think differently about work, workforce and workplaces. 
So I think that the, the space is going to be really interesting. It's a space where we work. Um, we have a fraternity brother by the name of Jim Castleberry, who's like a legend in this, in this space. He used to manage the MacArthur Foundation, which is a billion dollar fund. And now he's at another billionaire fund. Uh, that's, a, that's what's called a family office, which is a family office is if you're a very rich bug, you got these people managing your money. And so which to my guys in the NBA, you need a family office. Let's just talk about that. And um, and so he purchased the spot across from uh, the Bowen Hills Crenshaw Plaza. There's a couple of different spots on Stalker. Mm -hmm. And ironically, that's where my fund is going to be located. It will be the first, if I'm not mistaken, the first and largest venture fund in Bowen Hills, directly in Bowen Hills. Sweet. So, so you know, I joke and I, and I kid, like, there's a fund called Mac Venture Capital that's owned by one of our other fraternity brothers, um, Charles King, who's right now, shout out to Charles King. I'm, I'm hoping that Judas and Messiah wins at the Oscars tonight. Um, but they're located in West Hollywood. There's another fund located in in um, in, um, in Century City. But I tell people, I'm in the hood. I'm in Baldwin Hills. Pull up. <laughs> I, you love know? I love it. I love it. And, you know, what, what's some of the stuff? You you kind of piqued my interest. You said they had, like, a podcast studio, film studio, all, yeah. this, all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, so that company, uh, it, like it's just a family office, they own uh, a, an entertainment company called Wayfair, Wayfair Entertainment. Right, and so I know they're going to make sure that that space has has uh, facilities for podcasting, for video casting, and everything else. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, myself and a, and and a, and a guy who's uh, the social media manager for Will I Am, we're starting a podcast. To your point, connection, technology, and music, and the whole idea is we're bringing in people in, in music and people music and entertainment and people in tech. We talk about the similarities and what they do. The same thing that I mentioned about how artists and founders. Venture funds and labels, accelerators, and 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 uh, radio stations or DSPs are similar. That whole idea is coming to this podcast, so we're going to kind of delve deep into that and have people on the show like Will I Am, Sir D Smoke, and and IDK and others um, alongside with founders that I know and talk about their journeys. Dope, dope. Hey, you, you will you have editing space in the spot? Oh yeah, I mean, there's three buildings. The building, the one building, seven, seven. No, first of all, Wayfair Studios is a really great studio. Okay. If you haven't checked them out, <laughs> definitely check them out. Uh, but I, but I think the good thing about the neighborhood is that we don't have to now. We don't have to go outside of the neighborhood to 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 get content. We're already creating the content. Now we don't have to go outside our community for the content to be packaged and distributed. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, great. I mean. Hey, man, we just want to make sure that because mm -hmm. young Dio behind the boards, our producer, you know, I, you know, make sure he has an editing space. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To learn and grow his skills. So, you know, when you said third quarter, you, you guys moving over there? Yeah, I think the third of in the third beginning of fourth quarter this year. Yeah. Hey, we were already thinking I already talked to, to Emily about it. It's like, listen, the offices for miles ahead of cancer. You know, let's let's make sure we have something there and, and, su and to support. So thank you for bringing that to us. Yeah. And not only that, the community, I hope the community supports it. Because I think, you know, a lot of times, too, we when I first came to California, I came to California in 99. And I remember going up to Fox Hills Mall and I remember like like all the businesses Ooh, that were there. Nine at the Fox Hills Mall. <laughs> you know, it was, it was, it was, it was, was that oak tree? <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And, 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 and I look at when I look at things now, like this is what, 20 plus years later. And when I look at Lamert Park and I look at mm. the African drumming circle is no longer there. Mm. When I look at a lot of the black owned businesses are no longer are kind of being pushed out. Or when I see even on the street that my wife grew up, we have a residence right across from Target on La Cienega. Mm, it's changing. Right. So I think a lot of us who are, who are of, you know, 40, 30, 20, we need to come back in and, and own, yeah. right? But to your point, the ownership begins with our mind and then everything else can follow behind it. What did Invogue say? Free your mind, <laughs> mind. the rest will follow? Your ass will follow. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Hey, man, we love it. Hey, where can people get in contact with you? How can they, you know, contact, you know, Yo. get with you? Uh, appreciate it, man. So, so number one, um, if you're listening and you reach out to me uh, on Twitter at Econo Ahmad, E C O N O A H M A D, um, LinkedIn, my full name is Taj Ahmad Eldridge. 
Uh, make sure you put skinny black clowns. I don't accept everybody. So, you know, you're going gonna to have to put SBL in there or something, you know. And if you're a noob, I mean, I, I need to see Cap Alphasar somewhere on your profile because we, we, we ain't going that way. Um, I'm, on, I'm on Instagram, but I, I don't really get down on Instagram. I'm a love of words versus images, so Twitter's mm -hmm. my thing. Yeah. But I, I think, you know, the, again, to the point, when you do connect with me, I'm connected with other folks that are out there because there's other folks who are just like me who are trying to make sure that we spread this information out there. And, and, and lastly, I'm, I'm going to give this. Um, you know, there's an organization, great organization called HBCU.VC that's changing, cha training the next generation of people in venture that look like me come from HBCU. So that's a really great organization to support as well. Any last questions, Jay? Nah, man, I just want to give you your flowers, brother. I appreciate you coming, man. Yes, sir. You know, especially all the challenges, you know, we're going to be praying for you. Yeah. You know, he got your back. That means we got your back. Oh, yeah. You know, you got an army with you, man. Appreciate it. And, and to that point, let, let me, you know, I, I always talk about this. I'm an advocate for the National Kidney Foundation. For your listeners, what he's talking about is that about two years ago, I got diagnosed with this rare genetic disease called FSGS, which impacts a lot of people of color, black folks specifically, and it impacts your kidneys. It creates kidney failure immediately. And, and for me, what was interesting was that, and, and again, this is the reason why ownership is important. This is the reason why representation is important. About 10 years ago, I went to a nephrologist to get checked out. And it was a Caucasian nephrologist. And he's like, oh, like, you're just tired. You, you know, you're working hard. You're a black man that goes with the territory. Don't worry about it. So I did that. I did not worry about it. I'm paying for this guy to, to look at my health. And I trusted him. Ten years later, this disease kept manifesting itself. And the interesting thing about this disease, you don't feel it. It's not a disease where you yeah. feel yourself feeling. You're like, oh, you know, you're, you're going to go to the doctor. You just get tired. And, you, and, and the way that you, you, you urinate changes, but it's not change and significant enough for you to like, you're not peeing blood, so you're not like, I'm, I'm dead, you know, but, you, but it's just changing. And I was at a party with this young lady who's Indian American, and, and I was telling her about the situation, and the look on her face was horror, right? Because she's like, I was telling her, I was like, yeah, I couldn't get insurance and all this other stuff. She's like, you need a biopsy right now. And I'm like, what the fuck is a biopsy, right? And so, and so when I went to get it done, I later found out I was stage five. Had I not met her, I wouldn't be here today even having this conversation because I would have been dead because that's a disease that has killed so many from five dog to many, to many others, right? Mm. And what I also learned in my research from the disease is environmentally caused, both by the climate, which mm. is how we, there are carcinogens in the air and, and also in our environment. And so, what I later found out was three of my cousins, who we all grew up around the same area in Dallas, all three of us have the same disease. Mm, wow. Right? One passed away. <laughs> one is younger than me. We're all under the age of 50. So a lot of these things, the reason why I want to get more of us into clean tech is because of that. Mm -hmm. There's a, to, drive, to drive an electric vehicle is not just to, to save the, the whales and shit in the future. It's to save Tyrone, Taj, and Rob right now. Right on. Because clean tech is a public health issue. It's an economic issue and a social social justice issue. So I, I think that from that standpoint, number one, let's get educated about it. Let's really take take our health into our our our, our idea, and let's talk about it. Because I think a lot of times too, people don't talk about their ailments and their illnesses. And remember, when I talk about turning your ills into learnings, I mean that for my health too, right? Because it's like somebody might be right now having the same issues that I had, being tired having a urine, have bubbles in it, and don't think nothing wrong. Mm. If you're having that, go check to a nephrologist right now, right? So I think that's one of the things we have to do. We have to always be open and honest about what's happening with us because we don't know who's hearing that and how that's going to be impacted by them. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's wild, man. Um, so, you know, it's something that most, most people don't know, these guys know, like when I was, like, going through the whole process <laughs> at, at Loma Linda, like – I don't think they met you yet. <laughs> like, yeah. like this is the dude that you know went through that process to 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 make sure you here, brother. Yeah. And the crazy thing we talk about health. When I was big, Rob, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Even though um, I'm plant based, you know, healthier, you know, hundred pounds lighter than I used to be, those effects still was affecting my heart, and I didn't even know it, right? Even though I'm healthy now. Mm -hmm. One of the guys in going through the process was like, man, you're the healthiest dude we have ever seen come through here, but we can't do the process with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that was one of the worst calls I ever had to make to you, brother. Like, yo, yeah. man, I'm, I'm disqualified. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that hurt. 
Yeah, but I think for me, what, what I realize is that, you know, when, and, and it was funny, I've said this to my own children, and I heard Nip Mama say this to, to, to them, is like, when I got diagnosed and I realized that my mortality was coming, one of the things I said to my kids, and I said that death is nothing to be afraid of. Mm. It's something to prepare for. Yeah. So let's get prepared. Let's get prepared for if I'm not here, we know what pathway to do. If mm. I'm not here, this is the way we're going to do it. But the reality of it is all of us are going to fucking die. Not an if, it's a when. So <laughs> that's the mentality we need to have. And I, and I think for me, like I, I feel like this, this disease has been a blessing because it enabled me to have this conversation and, and talk to people about it. It's enabled people like Rob and others to realize that, hey, yo, like, I need something may not be right because I'm going through this process and now I got to check on my own health. And and not only that, like, I again, I'm, I'm up three days a week, three o'clock in the morning to do dialysis. But instead of being pissed off about it, what I'm doing is that's how I raise my $250 million. I'm making calls to Europe. I'm making calls to the Middle East. While everybody sleep, even on the East Coast, I'm up and I'm done. And so I set out to say that any adversity you're going through, whether you're living in the hood, whether you're doing this, whether you have disease or ailments, there, there is a bit of positivity in that if you just allow it to happen, right? Everything has purpose, you know? So, so that's, that's one of the last things we're saying that, man. Hey, man, again, uh, authentic black male conversation with the barbershop meets the library, uh, meets personal development. Uh, Dr. Taz Eldridge. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. And he clean. God, yeah. clean. Yeah, looking like a million dollars we, after tax money, boy. We got to do it. <laughs> hey, hey, looking like a stack of stimulus checks. <laughs> <laughs> that was all right right there. Cool. Hey, yeah. man, that was, that was fun. <laughs>